Hello, I'm Vance Willis, and welcome to this week's episode of The Techies. The Techies is a new show that we're trying out, and it's about technology. We have guests that will join us, and uh, stick around, and let's see what we talk about this week. So, on this week's show, I'm joined by a good friend and colleague, uh, Mr. Mark Johnson. So, Mark, welcome to the Techies. How are you today? Hey, I am doing great, and thank you very much for inviting me on the very first sort of Alpha 0001 edition of the Techies. I think this is a great idea of yours, and I think this is something that will uh, that people will enjoy, and we'll mould it to, to what people want us to talk about, right? Exactly. And one of the big things every week is, did you press record? And yes, we did press record in the beginning. So things are off to a good start. But, uh, but, but thanks, thanks for joining. So um, this week, we have a couple of things that we would, we would like to discuss. And uh, just, some, just some general stuff that, we've, that we found. Um, now, Mark, I believe this week there was a new device that was released out of Europe and uh, it was called the, everyone's calling it the Raspberry Pi, I guess because like an apple pie, but I, I think it's actually spelled Rapsberry Pi. Is, what kind of information do you have on, on that? <laughs> no, well, it, it is the Raspberry Pi. It's actually had a lot of press coverage over here, an, an awful lot of press coverage. Um, and it is, uh, it's been designed by basically some scientists, uh, I guess, and, and, and engineers who were getting um, sort of fed up that kids were coming out of schools and not really understanding, um, you know, much about computers. And this is something I have heard from people in the computer industry as well. I had lunch with some very good friends who run a computer company in uh, just outside London. And they said that they get, you know, lots of IT uh, graduates applying to them for jobs. And they've had to devise their own simple sort of test to give people before they interview them. Because the majority of students that they see who come out of, uh, of college with IT qualifications don't know fairly basic things. And I think this is all related to the fact that the syllabuses have... have you know, they've gone away from programming. They've gone away from, you know, getting to behind how things work. Um, and so I think these engineers are seeing the same thing. And they've come up with this very cheap, very affordable little uh, computer, which is you know, around uh, 30 bucks, 35 bucks. Uh, you plug in a, uh, um, um, an HDMI, you know, keyboard and mouse. You can plug in a monitor to it. You can add memory. And I believe... They have sold uh, near close to a million units within 48 hours of it launching. Put it this way, I'm on the wait list. Right. Well, so I tried to get on myself, and I've got it up on the screen now. We can take a look at it. I understand this thing's about the size of a credit card or deck of cards in, in physical size, and I believe there are two different models. Is that correct? I think one uh, has a network ability and the other one does not. Is that correct? Yeah, that, uh, yeah, and they're also their seller, their seller version, at least here in the UK, which comes with a keyboard and mouse and some additional RAM, and there's a, an add-on kit of, uh, of, of accessories. So the idea behind this is that you know, people get to see a, a bit of electronics, I and mean, eventually I think we'll see these used in all sorts of things, and I think companies will probably end up buying them and putting them into products, and so people won't even know that they're, uh, you know, they're running a, a, a Raspberry Pi behind the scenes. Um, and you know, they, they put them into schools, they're doing programming, it, it runs you know, different you know, versions of, uh, of Linux, uh, and it is fast enough, so they say, to be able to run uh, you know, 1080p video. And it is, I think, this takes me back to, I, bought, I built a computer called the Acorn Atom, which sort of the, the predecessor of what became known as the BBC Micro. Uh, it was just fun, you know, for young people, uh, experimenting. There is no reason, really, why 
you know, nearly every kid can't have uh, one of these to play around with. And I think it's going to be great for computing and it's going to be great for engineers because, you know, the UK, at least, I think like a lot of country, needs more engineers. I agree. Um, it, you know, we see the, the kind of the circuit board layout. Looks like it's got an SD card, uh, power adapter, HDMI out. Um, it's got uh, 256 meg of RAM built on. Um, I think that's composite video. Is that correct? Composite video, um, audio, USB, and like we said, the um, is it 10 pound? I think it's a 10 pound upgrade to get the land uh, connector on there. I believe. I think it's different uh, between that. So, do you do you actually um, do you actually have one? You say on order. You've pre ordered pre ordered one. Were you no, able I, to get through? Could you get through to the website? No, over here they are. There's in the UK. There are two companies, which is um, uh, RS Components and Farnell. They are big. Uh, companies who uh, you know, are, the, are the, probably the major distributors of electronic components in the, in the UK. And they both had them. Both of their websites were basically unavailable on, uh, was, it, was it Wednesday it, Wednesday it launched? And I tried to get onto, uh, onto the Farnell website and just, just couldn't get through. And so now when you go, they say, you know, are you interested? Click here. And you can just express interest for when they'll get their next uh, supply of orders. Now, there is a great website. and I'm not sure if you've come across it, Vance, and that's called element14.com. And this is a, a you know, group of engineers who have put this together. And it's not just about the Raspberry Pi, but it's it's a great sort of resource for people who want to experiment and dabble with uh, with computers. And uh, we were we were just uh, talking very briefly uh, pre-show about well what does you know element fourteen so what is the fourteenth element and we should have known because the fourteenth element in the periodic table is silicon. Yep, we should have known. Yes, we should have. I have not run across that. I hope to check it out later on today. So um, so that'll be good. But uh, so super small PCs. Everything we see. Um, you know, we do um, a, a show on studiotech.tv every week, and we are always talking about the, the miniaturization of everything that we deal with. So now there, there are uh, television trucks have been reduced to the size of a suitcase or less. And uh, even, you know, so for, for broadcasting, streaming on the Internet, devices are getting smaller. And now there's even a device that's about the size. There's a couple of devices that are about the size, uh, a little bit larger than this one, that will allow, um, you know, streaming almost like a TriCaster, Minicaster. So we hope to uh, we hope to get a test unit on that. We've contacted a couple of times. I think they've got some delivery um challenges trying to get those units out but um so everything seems to be getting smaller but this pc was certainly a hot deal i know it was all over the news here in the u.s and i believe there in the uk as well yeah absolutely and it is seen as as a big deal i, I think that is uh, that is fantastic because we need you know it, not only do we need people to you know go and become engineers etc but it is just good fun and i think it boosts confidence if you you know, you write a, do a little bit of programming, and uh, the reason that it is uh, is called the Pi, I am told, is because it used the Python programming language, and uh, you know it wasn't because of uh, 3.14, etc. Uh, and it is, uh, I think, it's just really, really exciting. And I was disappointed not to be able to order one because it, it does take me back to uh, to a, a long time ago, as when I was. You know, built built my first uh, my first computer. I mean, this isn't you know revolution. There have been small computers before, but I think what they have done here is they have sort of really simplified the device. But because they have decided that it's going to be a mass market device, you know, in in you know millions, they've been able to get the uh, the price right down. Uh, and I, I think we will see people using these basically as embedded controllers. And I've been sitting here, you know, today thinking, well, if we could have a dedicated controller just to do that, wouldn't that be great? And you know, thirty dollars or thirty pounds for something that you can uh, you can quickly you know put to a, put to use is uh, it's going to be great. So I think this is a really significant, uh, uh, you know, announcement. Uh, and maybe even spawn some, uh, some, some shows on the internet about, about using it. I'm sure that's going to happen as well. I agree completely. Well, so that's, that's great, uh, great to hear, you know, that, that uh, we, we can pick one of those up hopefully in the next <laughs> coming weeks or months. One of the other things that I found uh, cruising around the internet this week was a Mac 
uh, application. We are we're big proponents of AirPlay, screen sharing, screen mirroring, and a new application that was released this week is called Reflection. Now, the Reflection app is an installable app on uh, the the, the uh, Apple operating system on to Mac OS OS 10. And it sits there and resides and actually turns the, the Macintosh into an AirPlay ready device. So your iOS device generally running 5.0 uh, one and above, I believe. So iPhone 4s's and iPad 2s and above can actually send AirPlay device to the, um, the Macintosh, which is great because I think the new version mark of the um, the Apple operating system will have this built in, right? I, I believe I believe we'll have that uh, this summer, right? Well, that, that's what that's what we're hearing. So this is obviously for those of you with uh, with Mac devices, and and this uh, AirPlay is, is, as Vance has said, is the ability to uh, basically to send your data. The, the, Apple use it, for instance, on the Apple TV. So if you have an iPad, you can. Uh, with a video on, you can actually send that to your Apple TV and watch it on your TV, for example. Right. There are there are some devices that uh, use it uh, if you are if you're you know making uh, programs, videos, products from new tech such as the TriCaster have a, have sort of the AirPlay receiver uh, technology built into it, and so that's what this app does. It basically it turns the the MacBook or your iMac into a an AirPlay receiver. Exactly. So, so I've um, I just installed it. I've got it on a couple of my Macs, and I installed it on a MacBook Pro, an older MacBook Pro, and you can see that it shows an image almost of a, a border uh, of my I iPad, which, by the way, is uh, in landscape mode, and you can see that I am now panning left and right with this. Now, I've not been able to figure out how to get it full screen, but I am mirroring everything that is on my iPad and it is wireless so um, I'll do a I'll do a, a screen um, let's see here I'll flip over and you can you can see that I have the iPad here and there is the screen and so as I as I move these go back to this there it is there so I'm just I'm moving along and you're actually seeing things now um, a couple of things that I've noticed is some of the applications on this, even though it's very, very fluid, very clean, that some of the applications calls uh, this application called Reflection to stop. I don't know exactly which do and which do not. Um, let's just uh, let's just try one. Let's see if I can find one here real quick. Um, let's see. I was going to try Google Earth, but I don't know that that may bring it down. Let's see what happens. Okay, so here's Google Earth. Starting on my iPad, of course, and it's taking a long time on my iPad. So there's Google Earth, and of course, it's spinning down into the U.S. Don't know where it's going to end up, but as you can see, it uh, seems to be working fine. So, oh my goodness, uh, <laughs> I recognize that. <clears throat> so, um, anyway... Peter, that is, uh, that is a compound that resembles close to uh, where I live. So, yeah. um, that, so, so, that, so that, that video was, was, was pretty good, and I'm just obviously watching it on the, on the, the Skype video that you're sending back to me. Right. But, but, but that, see, that seems... No, it's very fluid. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm actually just moving my finger right along on, on Google, uh, Google Earth and, you know, zooming and, and spinning, and uh, yeah, so yeah. it's... Uh, and that's a pretty updated picture, by the way, too. So, so anyway, <laughs> so so anyway, um, that's that's this week's kind of um, iOS app. You can see I have it on the on the iPad, and um, you know, so you can do you could use screenshots. You could use that for video recording. You could use it for a number of things. I think AirPlay on the Mac is one of the largest without having wires. Okay, because the big thing is you want to take content that you have on this device or on the laptop or desktop and be able to, to, to throw it to other locations. And uh, this really caught my eye. Reflection is the app. And if you notice, uh, and I did tell you that if you turn it into portrait... I, I was going to ask what happens when it, you go it, into portrait. It, it, into, oh, okay. it, it turns into portrait, and of course, it, it renegotiates. So I wonder, I wonder whether it's only showing that size on the screen because that's showing the actual pixel count, isn't it? Because it is, the, right. The, and that's the, what, the iPad's 1024 by... 
768 or whatever, or something like that, isn't it? Right, and, and the iPhone is even smaller, but it's very high resolution. And that was one of the things I was, I was mentioning is I have not figured out if there's a way to get it to full resolution. Because that, that would be fantastic for presentations. It, you know, you can just exactly. walk around and then you can just swipe your, swipe your presentation. It, exactly. And, and, you know, it's brand new this week. It was just released. Um, it is an application for Mac. Again, it is not an iOS app. Um, some of the, um, the preferences, I don't know if it will allow me to do preferences while we're actually uh, sending to it. So it says optimize for any device. So we can change resolutions here to 1920 by 1080 um, or to the iPad resolution. So I, I wonder what happens if I hit high res 1080. What do you think would happen if I did that? Go on, go on. Then we'll move on to the next All topic. All right, excellent. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens when I hit done. It may it may just bungle everything up. I don't know. Yeah, uh, frames be. frames per second 447 um, hasn't hasn't uh, uh, you know hasn't changed anything on the uh, on the resolution there, but. Um, but at any rate, still a pretty neat app. So you could add AirPlay to any device. Up until this point, I believe, and I say to any Mac um, OS X, up until this point, I believe there was only one um, lady that was a Mac developer that had something similar to this that was very difficult to configure. But um, I'd use that. I forgot the name of it. But um, this is this is a pretty neat uh, pretty neat deal. Um, I, I believe the uh, the fee for this application is $19.95 for one copy and thirty nine ninety five for five copies for the family pack. And then with okay, that, so that's, that's, yeah, that's answered my next question. So it's not in the App Store because it, they can't do that in the App Store. Exactly. Right. It's, so. it's, it's, it, that's right. It's only available for, for download. Actually, it's in the uh, Mac App Store, but not in the iOS App Store. I think. Okay, but it, if it's in the Mac App Store, you can't limit the number of um, no, that's, downloads, can you? That, so well, that's uh, right. Um, maybe the, maybe the single user version is the single. But I, might no, I, but then, no, then no, no, no. You're exactly it. right. You're exactly right. I just it's clicked on buy. You're exactly right, Mark. It is only via the manu the uh, the designer's yeah. website. Right. It is, and and you actually select the number you want, add to cart, and buy. And that's and that's what happens. And they do give you so, a reduction yeah. in exactly. So there may be people watching and saying, well, you know, don't, don't Windows users saying, what's the App Store? So just very quickly then, what Apple have done is to create a store for applications for the, uh, for the Mac, for OS X. So if you're used to buying applications on a, you know, Android phone from the Android store or, you know, buying things on, from iTunes, it's really, really a similar thing. But the Apple... Now, obviously, you know, they control it. They, they can imp impose some, uh, some rules and regulations around it. Some are good. Some are not so good. And obviously, they take a share. I think it's 30% of the, of the price of the, uh, of the app. But it is a great way of, uh, of easily buying apps. It just downloads and installs them for you. But one of the things is that if you buy it, you know, w with your... Um, you know, w with your Apple account, you can install it on you know, the, the number of uh, any number of machines that you own. So, if you have uh, a MacBook Pro, which is you know a, a Apple laptop and an iMac, a desktop, you buy it once, install it, you log it onto the on, onto the other machine, you go into the App Store, you see what you bought, and you can install it there as well. So, from a from a usability and friendliness, and you know, a lot of people I think think it's a little bit safer. Buying uh, apps through the App Store, uh, I'm not sure if that really has been uh, demonstrated, but it certainly makes you feel um, better about buying them. So, sorry, I went off on a tangent there, Vance. That's what the uh, the App Store is, because people in the Windows world probably haven't heard about it. Well, that's a good point. You know, and on the Windows side, I believe there are also App Stores in creation on the Microsoft side. Um, next week, or this coming week's new. Um, buzz, I guess, is the potential release of the iPad 3. So, Mark, um, you got one on order yet? You're going to order one. <laughs> You're going to order one uh, Wednesday. I believe Wednesday the, the 7th at... Um, I think 10, 10, 10, 10 a.m. Yeah, that's right. So Pacific. Yep. Pacific. Yeah. Two and seven, right? So, so uh, ten on the West Coast, two East Coast, and seven uh, UK time, I believe, or yeah. UTC, right. Yeah, so yeah, we'll 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 see. The um, I, I bought the iPad one. I have the uh, iPad uh, two, and actually, one of my kids last week said, "Hey, Dad, I I understand there's a new iPad coming out, and I just want to register my claim so that when you buy 
the iPad 3, you know, mum gets the iPad 2 and then I get the iPad 1. And, but uh, I'm not sure it's going to, A, it's going to work that way or whether I'll get, I'll wait and see. I, I, I'm pretty enthusiastic. You know, I don't want to turn this into, into an Apple show, but I am uh, probably, the iPad is probably the best device I have bar none. I, I just love it. If I could only have one bit of electronics, it would probably be the iPad. I enjoy it that much. The, I mean, the rumours that we have heard, I mean, the invites have gone out for this uh, event next uh, Wednesday. Rumours we've heard are it's going to have a, a much more high-resolution display. It's going to have a faster processor. Uh, there's talk that they might be doing away with the, the, the one button that is on the front of it. I don't know. The dis I think the display on the iPad is, 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 is pretty good. It's, it's cracky. I don't look at it and think, oh, this is a, uh, a poor display. I really would uh, have, uh, you know, prefer higher resolution. I think if once you get into, you know, wanting 1080p videos and maybe using AirPlay to stream them to things, it would be nice perhaps to be able to use them on that. But I don't see that as a big inhibitor. So I, for me, I think it would have to have something that really offers something, you know, new and different that was a compelling reason to, uh, to buy it. Because I think the iPad, and I used to use the iPad 1 and the iPad 2, and to be honest, I can't really see much difference uh, between them. Obviously, the iPad 2 has got uh, uh, you know, the cameras, but uh, I think it'd have to be something compelling to make me buy one straight away. No doubt I'll get one down the road. I agree. So, so we have a rumor, um, kind of a roundup for it. Um, so Retina Display, uh, I agree. The, I think the display on the 2 is great. I have a 2 and a 1, um, and I probably will get the, the 3 as well. Um, what do you think about this Mac rumors rumor that uh, 9.7 is smaller, a smaller uh, screen size? What do you think? Well, I think, you know, I mean, there have been rumors of this 7.9. 7 is that the one you meant, or the, uh, as opposed to the existing? Well, actually, what, they're, the saying, they're saying, yeah, they're saying 9.7 uh, is confirmed. So I guess that's not the, uh, I guess that's not the smaller one. I know I've seen the rumors yeah. for smaller ones. Yeah. But. Yeah. Uh, well, there have been rumors about a smaller device. Again, I can't really see the point, apart from the fact some people say, well, if you have a big pocket and you have a, a seven inch device something like uh, the, the the galaxy tab you can sort of drop it into a, a pocket but uh i guess you know maybe as i get older i like things being a little bit bigger you know the right. the, the, the iphone screen is 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 uh, is is okay um but i like a bigger screen so i i don't know the i guess the amazon fire which still isn't released in europe or i think it's only available in the in the us what size screen is that and i know that has sold that's the probably the closest competitor that's about a seven inch. i'm not sure exactly i've got one um but i believe it's a seven inch i'm not sure now look they are also saying that it could go up 80 us dollars from 499 to 579 that's another rumor um you know they they've got all got all kinds of this is kind of this is a, a put together of all of the rumors I believe you know they've got all of the the different processor uh, you know designations I think there was a everyone was hoping for the A6 I believe uh, which is a quad core I believe the A6 and I think this one's going to have an A5X I guess I don't know that's uh, that's what some of the but rumors I, I think Apple have it right you see people who come from the PC world tend to always talk speeds and feeds right you know you, you want an intel i7 960 or a, you know sandy bridge or and apple look at it from a from the user's experience how does it work you know so i don't care what processor it has i don't care um you know that's a very what, good point i agree with you completely on that yeah, it. I, you know, whether it's an A five X, A six, it's does it do? You know, what it says on the tin, and is it responsive, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You know. That's an excellent point. I agree with that completely. It, it doesn't really matter how much RAM, what size processor it's got. And if it looks great, it shows you fonts, it does nice videos. I've got the uh, Infinity Blade, I believe, game that they had some super deal on it. I guess it's a big, I'm not a gamer, but um, I downloaded that on a, on a one-day special. And the graphics resolution on the iPad 2 and the audio, both the audio and the video on the iPad 2 is incredible, just incredible. And if they if they go to the 1080p, 
instead of the 720p that we now have in the um, in the iPad 2. Um, it, you know, it's just going to be more stunning. I don't know that I buy the. Uh, they don't have a button. You know, I, I think I'm with you there. That you know, it's probably a landscape um, picture. Some of the rumor mill photos showed the icons very high resolution without a button. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, Apple tends to like things clean and neat, and uh, you know, Steve Jobs always said he you know didn't like power buttons and didn't like too many buttons. So, so <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of that. Um, so, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be interesting. I always like Apple Keynotes. Uh, there's also rumor, of course, that they're going to bring out a new Apple TV. Exactly. And, and which the Apple TV at the moment is 720p, not 1080. And maybe that would make sense to uh, to improve that. And maybe there's some linkage between the two. And I think that's an, an in, you know uh, an interesting device. And even for you know even for people if you, you're not into Apple products, do check out the Apple TV because. For that, for ninety nine dollars, I mean, it's ninety nine or one hundred and one pounds now, which is infuriating. You know, that makes it one hundred and sixty dollars. Ridiculous pricing in the UK, but it it is a, a it is a great device for being able to play content. Now, you know, of course, you have to get the content from the uh, the Apple infrastructure using iTunes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but you know, Net Netflix is now on it, even in the UK. Um, I, I play, you know, videos that uh, we've imported into uh, in, into iTunes. So it's a uh, it's a great box. So I've got three of those, and I look forward to seeing, you know, probably almost to see if they're going to do anything with the Apple TV more than the Me too. iPad. Me too. You know, because because the iPad is just just so good that. You know, I, I don't know what they can do that would you know, compel me to go out and buy one. Right. And in, until this uh, Reflection app, you know, we were using an Apple TV, the Apple TV 2, uh, up in the studio and airplaying um, content from that into the air, the Apple TV and then up through the TriCaster. So um, I, I agree with you. I think the Apple TV... Do you think you think it's going to be the the small hockey hockey puck size, the small uh, unit, or do you think it's going to be the forty two inch TV? I think there's two schools on that. Uh, what, what do you think on that? I, I think it's going to be the small unit. I, I, I yeah, I, I think it'll too. be uh, whether it'll be that unit or a little bit bigger. I I would hope they'll take it up to ten eighty, which you know people have been waiting for. There's talk. Uh, I know that people have, uh, you know, sort of you know, hacked it, jailbroken it, as they call it in the Apple world, to open it up so you can you, you right. can actually run apps on it. So we know it's capable of it, but put a faster, um, you know, I think one of the things they found is it was a little bit slow. So maybe they're going to you know make it faster and, and open it up right. and be able to buy apps for it, so you can get your Netflix app or your. You know your app for the um, you know for American football or, exactly. or all the all these other apps that I have to you know that are on the top of the list even in the UK that we have to scroll through to get to something that we might be interested in. Right, right. So anyway, so yeah, that's right. This is certainly not an Apple show. We do enjoy uh, you know our Mac and Apple products. Um, both at the TTFN studio and here at uh, Tech Ag, and uh, so we don't we don't want to turn into a Mac show, but we do enjoy it, and we do think that Apple is you know leading um, the task. Of course, there were some reports this week that <laughs> Apple's larger than a lot of uh, a, a lot of countries as far as you know their, their <laughs> revenue. Um, there, there, there was there was a great joke that it, it wasn't true that Apple was going to be buying Greece. Right. The, <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, they the, might think it to be a bad investment, but that's another story. I don't know. Maybe, you know yeah. Apple Apple have got just under a hundred billion dollars. That's incredible. That is incredible. Yeah, they had, they they had their, uh, their their press conference in the last week where they were talking about you know w you know where they're asked. Well, as always, what are you going to do? Because a lot of the shareholders would like them to give that back to the shareholders. Right. And having said that, the share price still goes up and up, which you know isn't sort of normal um, you know logic. And uh, the, you know Tim Cook said they continue to look at uh, what to do with the with the money. Uh, I don't think they, you know, there was talk about them buying you know studios to buy source material. I can't see them doing that at all. I don't think that's they want they want to keep it uh, keep it simple and 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 just focus. Right. Uh, but uh, you know you you have to watch what they are what they're doing. And there's also talk that and there was a little bit of a slip up earlier this week that maybe we're going to see you know Microsoft Office for the iPad. Exactly. And maybe that will be announced on Wednesday as well. We, d we did see um, a Photoshop uh, app from Adobe this week, correct? Yeah. 
yeah. um, that, that's supposed which, to which, be... Which was announced, then pulled, and then put back out again because everybody knew it had been announced once, so, you know. Right, right. So that's interesting. So, yeah, I think on the Microsoft front, obviously Microsoft uh, did some more, um, you know, hoopla on, on Windows 8. And, you know, there's a couple different schools there as well. You know, do they go with the... You know the tiled version, or you know, I mean, uh, it, it'll it'll just be um, be interesting to see what happens when it, when Windows 8 comes out. I've heard a lot of uh, opinions about people. We're not going to get deep into into 8 today because of our time constraints, but I've heard a lot of people saying, "Hey, Windows 7 is like uh, Windows XP. It's solid. It has good drivers. It works nice." And yep. why would we update to eight, and not ha you know, not having all of the stuff when we've worked so hard to get seven, uh, which was a which l was leaps and bounds above Vista. I think everyone had problems with Vista, almost like Microsoft ME. But um, you know, so they, they kind of it seems like about every other cycle, Microsoft seems to have a little bit of, of, of a problem. Whether it's ME and then XP, you know, and 98 was decent, 90, 95 and 98 were good, you know, and and so it, it's amazing just in the last week to hear, hey, why should I go to, to Windows 8? But we'll we'll talk about Windows 8 a little bit more in the, in the um, you know in, in the coming days, but. Um, as we wrap up, you know, Mark, each week, you know, we talk a lot about things that are difficult. We run into difficult things, and it can be as simple as just plugging in an HDMI cable on your home theater system. You got a cable. It's two meters long, six feet long, nine feet long, three meters long, whatever. You plug it in uh, from point A to point B, and you get a black screen. So one of one of the the segments that we would like to get to in you know in this show is why is everything you know so hard? Why can't it just work? When it says it's an HDMI cable, you got an HDMI port, you plug it in, and it works. Now I got a little whimsical this week in our in our alpha, uh, as Mark called it, um, uh, not uh, 000001 episode. So I got a little whimsical and uh, just wanted to to show something that. Uh, Shows how hard things can be, and uh, and also maybe some success in that. So uh, let's let's J Star. Like I said, a little whimsical, um, just a little bit of fun to to end up the show today. Just to say, look, you know, you keep at something, and you'll probably get it. That's been some of our experience in the studios and uh, with technology in general. So uh, just kind of want to throw that in as a little bit of fun. Hope you enjoyed that, Mark. And um, you know, we're we're gonna wrap up this week's show, and uh, I, I appreciate you being here with me and, uh, and and trying this out so we'll we'll hopefully um, you know make this a better show as time goes on so thanks thanks a lot and uh, we'll, we'll have other shows for folks to um, to take a look at so that's great I, I I really enjoyed it it's good to be talking in a show about something a little bit broader than some of the stuff that uh, I do or we do on a day to day a week to week basis and uh, I think there is a, a real need for information out there we have uh, played with a lot of things and hopefully we can uh, impart some uh, some useful information and maybe help a few people with some of the challenges they've been facing. I agree. I agree. We're going to wrap it up for this week, but thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.